more than happy to, um, we will have a question and answer period at the end, and at which time it would be great if you, you know, are happy to speak up and, and unmute your microphones and contribute to a discussion. Um, during the presentations at the beginning now, it would, if you want to ask a question, it'd be great if you can use the chat box and that way we can try and address some of those, those questions as we go along. Um, and then hopefully we can um, continue that discussion during the Q&A session at the end. Um, final uh, just note of, of housekeeping is that um, we are recording the, the webinar because you know, we have had quite a number of people who have registered, but we appreciate that not everyone might be able to attend today. So we will be trying to make that available uh, after the webinar for, for everyone to make use of. So um, just wanted to be up, up front and transparent about that in case that's of concern to anyone uh, in, the, in the webinar room um, that it is being recorded. So um, now that all that's out of the way, we'll, we'll get into the, the reason that we're all here. So um, the, I guess the order of proceedings, I'm going to speak a little bit about what the, the centre is and what, it, what it's here to do. Um, Aaron Kiley from President of the Cotton Growers and Irrigators Association of the Central Highlands will follow me and he'll talk about you know, what we're, we're trying to achieve. What are those imperatives coming from industry? Um, what are the challenges in the north that need to be addressed and how we can try and contribute to that? Um, Brendan T Taylor for, uh, representing Grain Producers Australia um, we'll speak about how growers contribute, you know, the ideas process, how we um, uh, determine ideas that we, we're going to chase uh, research funding for. And finally, um, Bruce Vandersee from Vanderfield um, will speak about some of the, the big challenges facing um, Northern Australia and the role of, of industry and growers working together in that space. So um, we'll get right into it. And So, as a starting point, let, it'd be good just to get it out now. What is this, this Northern Cropping Centre of Excellence that you've probably heard bits um, about through the media or through industry groups? Um, in a nutshell, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an alliance, a collaboration of growers, researchers and industry um, that brings together researchers, agronomists, farm machinery experts, agribusiness experts from um, Central Highlands Development Corporation, our, our, our fifth partner. Um, and our aim is, like all good research and farm groups, we're, we're really out there to try and make a difference to um, the agricultural sector in Northern Australia. So um, bolstering productivity, profitability of Northern farming systems. So we understand that each, um, our farm has a, a number of, of priorities and they, they work as a, you know within systems of their own and so we're, we're taking quite a we understand that to, to address the various elements of a farming system we need uh, a range of skills and each of us on our own don't have the full gamut of skills um, to meet some of those needs so by working together we bring complementary skills to the table and hopefully the sum of our parts can start to address some of those challenges facing northern Australia. Um, so as I mentioned, involved in that group, bringing those, those farmer perspectives, um, the Central Highlands Cotton Growers and Irrigators Association, uh, Grain Producers Australia, Vanderfield and the Central Highlands Development Corporation along with, with the university here. Um, and in designing how this collaboration functions, we, we really made, made a, a conscious choice to put the role of farmers at the centre of that, of that collaboration. Um, for a couple of reasons. We want to be doing work that's, that's relevant to farmers and it's going to make a difference to, to farm businesses and farmers' lives. Um, the second reason is that we want farmers participating in research. Um, so if, if farmers are leading the research concepts and participating in the research, we're going to get much better outcomes because uh, they're going to be giving us some, some really first-hand feedback on what works in the real world or, or whether the, the researchers are uh, you know, off with, you know, have got their head in the clouds. We want to keep it grounded and make sure that the uh, the solutions that are being developed are not just answering what's possible, but what's practical for farmers as well. So make, being able to make a, a real difference in real world activity. And the final element of why, you know, we want 
we all wanted together to make sure that the farmer groups were well represented in this collaboration is to um, help extend the impact of that um, of the research that, that we're going to try and undertake together um, by participating by having um, their networks involved by hosting trials on farms um, not only is the research being ground truth it's also being there's an element of extension that's built with, automatically built within that uh, research design so um, we've really thought hard about our focus and um, developing a model that will lead to impact as well. How do we work? Um, so it's a it's a quite an informal alliance in a lot of ways. We come to the table with good out of goodwill. We, we're governed by a memorandum of understanding only. So um, and what we come together each month every few weeks for a meeting, it's about sharing ideas and coming up with some solutions so that we can um, generate some research in the region that addresses Northern Australian um, issues. So um, we share ideas, we road test them together, we work out how we can work together to um, uh, develop a research project design um, to, to answer some of those challenges and then we go and develop a joint, joint funding proposal um, to go to funding agencies such as GRDC, Cotton Research and Development Corporation, or the CRC for Northern Australia, for example. So by having that cooperation and, and lots of people at the table, it actually enhances our, the quality of our research ideas and applications, um, as well as um, uh, I think it enhances our chances of bringing new research activity to the North by, having a, a, uh, by working together rather than as, as individual agencies. Um, we have given quite a bit of thought already to what we want to focus on and um, you know Brendan and Aaron will talk to this a bit more um, in a bit more detail but we've tried to listen to what the growers have told us around farming systems around new crops coming into those systems around using emerald as a base for launching and expanding the industry further north tapping into the skills and, and, um, and services and um, established advice, advisory bodies that are already in Emerald and the Highlands and as a, as a way of taking, uh, launching further north into some of those newer production zones. So we've got a basis of, of skills and uh, capability that we can bring um, further north from there. Oh, sorry. Okay, final final point I was hoping to make before I hand over um, to Aaron is that, as I said, this is a, we're brand new, it's very young, and the Central Highlands is a starting point. But in saying that, it's like a north facing house. We've got our, our base in Emerald and we're looking north. So what can we address for Northern Australia? How can we um, support the expansion of cropping industries into the north? By working together, we can bring some of that existing capability, grow it, um, and go work together to get uh, uh, achieve some funding for research through uh, the research agencies. Um, we've deliberately held a, a designed ourselves through an MOU structure so that we um, can allow for other parties to to join um, if people want to, and they'll be that'll be go through a bit of a process of how do we. Um, bring in new new representative bodies or agencies as opposed to some groups um, who are happy just to work on their you know in their own space in within northern australia um, we'd still love to work with you on a project by project basis so to, whether um, so participation in research projects is not limited to this committee um, that's come together under this mou of the of the center of excellence um, if there's a project out there that um, we don't have the skills for or we don't have people to support in certain regions we're absolutely looking to partner because collaboration is the key to the success of this concept and it's going to be and having those the involvement of people at the grassroots level as i said that was the core foundation stone for getting this off the ground so we want to work with with uh, grower groups and um, 
service providers all over the north. So this is a, the hub to, to bring ideas to and hopefully we can, to, by working together, uh, we can get some of that funding um, to make some of those ideas a reality and then deliver on ground through those, uh, those project by project partnerships with, with, uh, with people in different regions. So I guess that's the very high level sort of introduction. Um, before I hand over to Aaron to talk about, you know, what our thinking was around why there's a need for such an organisation, I'll just remind everyone again, please, if you have a question that you want answered along the way, please um, make use of the chat box and I'll um, raise those questions for our speakers as we go along. Otherwise, feel free to hold on to them until we have a, a Q&A session at the end. Um, over to you, Aaron. How are you all? I'm um, Aaron Coley, irrigated farmer from Emerald. Quick introduction and chair of the Central Holmes Cotton Growers and Irrigate. Um, yeah, no, it's very exciting to start off to be a part of the Northern Cropping Research Centre of Excellence and um, yeah, partnering with CQU, Grain Growers, Vanderfield and um, CHDC. Um, I suppose as a grower group, it's um, getting research from growers that we can get through things to growers uh, through agronomists and get forward into research, connecting with um, industry. And um, it's great to see people on board and it'd be great to have a few more on board. Um, supporting the um, centre of um, the Northern Australia, I think is very important for agriculture as a whole. It's the next, um, I suppose, the frontier of ag. And um, Emerald North, we would uh, love to be a part of it. And um, with growers, researchers to be involved with other organisations and ideas to um, help grow Northern Australia and be part of a, um, one of us, one as a whole. So that's probably why um, the need's there because um, we need to grow this Northern Australia all together. So um, it's great to be on board. Um, hoping to achieve is um, yeah, I suppose it's only early days, but growing ag, there's a lot of unutilised land, a lot of growers that love to connect with growers, and um, that's why the Central Island Cotton Growers and Irrigators would um, like to be a part and connect with CQU to do research and support Northern Australia. So, yeah, from there, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Um, over to you, Brendan, to give a bit of a uh, perspective from Grain Producers Australia's um, viewpoint and on, on how growers can, can get involved and, and contribute ideas into the mix. Um, thanks for having me on today. And yeah, so I'm Brendan Taylor, um, Chair of uh, AgForce Grains Board, but uh, as the structure of Grain Producers Australia works, um, they're made up of all the state farming organisations throughout Australia. So in this case, uh, in relation to the North, it'll be um, the members that they'll have um, through their structure will be Ag Force and Western Australian farmers. Um, so GPA represent Australia's broadacre grain, pulse and wool seed producers at the national level. Uh, GPA was created to ensure grain producers had a national body with representative uh, producer, fo producer focused structure. Um, GPA fosters a strong, innovative, profitable, globally competitive, environmentally sustainable grain industry in Australia. So that sounds exactly what we're talking about here, uh, Michael. Um, as I said, GPA members are, are made up of the state farming organisations throughout Australia. Um, they have direct members as also uh, on a levy based system. It's a non-profit organisation and it is the joint representative organisation of the grain industry of Australia uh, in conjunction with Grain Growers Limited. And we have a con uh, direct conduit and regular consult with uh, GRDC, the Grains Research and Development Corporation. So how can growers be involved? Um, I guess initially through uh, the state farming organisations, so whether that be WA or, or here in Queensland uh, with AgForce, but by no means does that, uh, if you're not a member of those organisations, that does not mean um, that you cannot be involved. And um, so the, the ideas will fed, be fed back in 
um, I guess through me or, or, or through um, um, other committee members or other members of the, um, that have signed on to the MOU. Um, and then those ideas will be put forward through the committee process for further investigation to see um, how they can be looked into. But as Michael said earlier, um, we absolutely want grower involvement. We want um, ideas coming from the ground up um, from, from growers, because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about is, is developing North Queensland and, and, and having grower involvement or, or getting more grower involvement. Um, so currently Ag Force have 534 grains members in central Queensland and or North Queensland. Um, as I said, that doesn't mean that people that aren't involved uh, in these organisations can't be involved. Um, but if you have any great ideas or research um, priorities, as, as I'm sure many people do that live in these regions, um, that they can be fed back in, you know, through myself or Cam Parker, our grains policy advisor, who's also sitting on the committee. Um, recently, AgForce has become involved in another commodity as cane up in the Burdekin. And um, my knowledge of the Burdekin region is growing uh, quickly, but they do grow a lot of grain in that region now in, um, in a crop rotation with sugar cane. And this is the one thing that's really about North Queensland or the Northern development is that the abundance of water and, and that's, I think that's largely what we're trying to tap into here is, is, is the water availability and getting the right crop um, and the right system and growing it at the right time of year um, to make it profitable and, and develop the industry in the North. Um, yeah, we've we've travelled in the north a few years ago and had a look around the Julia Creek um, in the Flinders catchment and the Gilbert River catchment and the potential in those regions for the right crop grown under the right conditions um, with the right agronomy, I think, is is enormous opportunities. Um, and I, th I really like the concept of this being um, a complete farming system. It's not, you know, it's not targeting grain, it's not targeting cotton, it's, it's a complete farming, uh, farming system and um, and a conjunction of all these crops grown, you know, in the same patch with, you know, zero tillage or ground cover, stubble retention, all these things, I think will be a critical part of the puzzle. So I'm looking forward to being involved and um, um, where it goes from here. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, that was excellent. Um, our final speaker before we get to Q&A time is Bruce Vandersey from, who's the director at Vanderfield. Um, and Bruce is going to speak about the importance of research and support in infrastructure for the development of the North. So a bit, bit of a broader view on where this uh, collaboration fits into the, North, the development of Northern Australia. Over to you, Bruce. Thanks, Michael. Hopefully you can all hear me, um, hear me clearly there. So um, it's great to be involved in this and um, I guess one of the points, and I think uh, Aaron made this just there a minute ago, that you know this is the still uh, Northern Australia uh, still is the new frontier for um, for agriculture in this country. Uh, most of the country is largely developed, still with I'm sure more improvements, but uh, that are possible. But uh, Northern Australia is has got a long way to go, um, and it's uh, both an incredible opportunity and an incredible challenge at the same time. Both, both are quite enormous. So um, we've been involved as Vanderfield in uh, Northern Australia, primarily, uh, firstly in uh, Kununurra and then in the Northern Territory um, uh, and more recently in Central Queensland and, and a bit further north. So um, we're um, uh, I guess we've had some some experience seeing things come and go and uh, just wanted to reflect on some of my thoughts about um, infrastructure. We're, we're part of this, um, the uh, Centre of Excellence um, uh, out, of, out of our interest. We're obviously very keenly interested in seeing the North develop. Uh, apart from, uh, from a personal perspective, wanting to hang around with some really smart people. So um, that's part of my interest in being involved. So, um, so yeah, we're definitely a key stakeholder in, in seeing the area develop. Um, and, um, and we do see our, our business as part of the 
um, infrastructure that is required to see the development occur. Obviously, there's lots of infrastructure things, but we see the services and things that we provide as being part of that, uh, that infrastructure. Um, in saying that, um, in saying what I'm about to say about different ideas for infrastructure, you know, the, the, um, the group that we're talking about here is wanting to be very realistic and obviously grow a focused as it's been said, and we want to make some valuable and achievable um, contributions with research. So, um, and I just want to highlight uh, again something Michael said that the goals or the aim of the of the Northern Australia uh, Crop Research Centre of Excellence is um, to bolster the productivity and profitability of northern farming systems. And I think you know that's quite simply put, but very. Um, very important that we stay focused on on those things. Um, I just want to quickly now, I'll just show you a, um, a um, map here. Um, hold on, that's not the one I want, this one. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I'm sure you all recognize that part of the world. Um, the yellow line is obviously the Tropic of Capricorn. So everything north of that is, is Northern Australia. Um, the green line there just shows how far it is from Pardue Station in Western Australia to Clermont. It's about 3,000 kilometres as the crow flies. And I've just, I've just put on that map some obviously scattered uh, different farming projects and, and areas that are um, either being well and truly uh, farmed now or, or, or potential for a lot more new development but as you can see you know we've got some real enormous challenges with distance remoteness um, and how do we make things operate um, so for, for researchers <laughs> some challenging um, uh, logistical issues there um, that we're, we're looking at so um, some of you may know some of those those spots that I've decided to pick but um, you know whether they be a single single farming enterprise like the uh, watermelon and peanut farm at Ali Karung, to um, the horticulture at Shamrock um, in uh, south of Broome, right across to some newer um, projects up in the in the hinterland of the Atherton Tableland there. So, uh, and obviously um, the the Central Highlands area with all of the activity that's happening there. So. Um, <clears throat> A lot of space between all of those things. So, so my thoughts around what additional infrastructure uh, could be researched to bolster both the productivity and profitability of these current and then proposed new ag ventures. Now, I don't know if you can see my see my uh, picture, but I've got a, a document here from the NT Farmers. Uh, it's not because I got that background picture. But there's a there's a heap of new projects being proposed in the Northern Territory, um, which which really uh, makes me wish I was at least thirty years younger. So, <laughs> um, so what other infrastructure could be researched to to help to allow these projects to to uh, run ahead? So obviously there's some incredible technological improvements that could be could be made like communication, connectivity, data transfer, etc. cetera. Um, linkages that would lead to better machine uptime, better machine utilization uh, in fields, things that would lead to even improved safety in remote areas, particularly on big, big cattle stations, etc. and stock management. I know there's a lot of research and new products available in those areas. Um, our focus is on cropping primarily here, but um, the remoteness of the areas we're talking about could definitely, you know, there's definitely room for uh, advancement in that technological area. Uh, what additional support infrastructure is required? Regional processing things, um, cotton gins. I think there's a challenge for the, the cotton industry to um, come up with a smaller and cheaper cotton gin. Um, not suggesting anyone on this call is a going to take on that research project but 
um, but other processing things as well um, that, that could facilitate uh, growth in the north. Um, a real challenge for the north is, is the availability of qualified people. Um, again, uh, just putting it out there, not saying it's a project, but um, uh, even farming and, and harvesting contractors availability is, is a challenge, although I think there's a fair amount of build it and they will come thinking with, with um, the north and uh, you know there's definitely people attracted there, particularly when we've, we've all know what it's like to sit through a, a long pro prolonged and painful drought. Uh, the north always looks more attractive <laughs> when it's not raining in the south. Um, storage and handling facilities, crop inputs providers, etc. All of those infrastructure areas need work. Um, I think also from an infrastructure point of view, or, or a research point of view, I should say, we need um, to think about better models for sharing knowledge. Um, one of the, you know, wh whether that be with remote uh, technology to, to um, enable remote agronomy, what tools could be provided um, for communication information and, and advice from a, a remote agronomist um, and remote service providers. There's obviously technology and tractors these days that connect remotely. So, you know, what other um, remote um, technologies could be used to share data and information. Um, and I think, uh, again, an, a, a research area could be, you know, models for keeping and gathering knowledge. I know there's a lot of uh, research uh, folk on the call today, but, you know, how do we learn, not just from researchers, but from farmers who have had successes and failures um, in the north, uh, learning how to and how not to do things, um, how how we gather and keep that information and share it, you know, grower to grower as well is very critical. Um, one small example, and I also won't mention any names or anything, but you know, a young guy um, who who went up to um, the territory quite a few years ago um, and learned how not to do. A particular crop for seven or eight years until such time as he was out of funds and and um, and really I think what he what he uh, where he failed uh, what sorry he probably did succeed by the end in knowing how to grow the particular crop he was working on but by that stage he was uh, you know the finances had run out and uh, you know I think some of the learning even though those sort of things are painful how we can even gather that sort of information is is really critical. So uh, it's not, I'm not telling anyone anything new, but there's been plenty of failures and successes in, in the North, and we need to learn from both of those. So just in, in closing from my uh, talk, which is probably saying a lot of things that are quite obvious, but you know, I really think we're on the cusp of a, of a, a lot of new growth in the North. I think it's very, very exciting. Um, and um, this is another opportunity for us to help um, speed that process up. So hopefully uh, we're on the right track and, um, and we're very uh, grateful to be part of it and really grateful for, to be doing something that we think will be significantly valuable to see growth go ahead. So thanks very much, Michael. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Bruce. Um, I'll get you to stop sharing yeah. your screen if that's all right. That's yep. great, thank you. Um, so, uh, question and answer time now. Um, and please, if anyone's got a, a question or something that they'd like to discuss, uh, don't hesitate to either put a, a comment in the chat box or unmute yourself and, and raise your hand and, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, to get things going, I did receive a question from um, a uh, an industry participant out on, on the highlands in the lead up to the the event today, asking about um, you know placement of, of staff resources uh, and and inclusion of extension in uh, delivery, and I guess um, 
in answer to that, so from the university's point of view, uh, we we really want to grow the um, the capacity of of having research in the regions. So that's really important to us. Uh, we really value working with communities and working in um, addressing what's important to them. Um, so one of our goals from obtaining or, and participating in research projects is to try and get some researchers living and working um, in some of these areas. So we've got a campus at Emerald. That's an obvious, our obvious starting point. We'd love to get uh, researchers there um, who can not just conduct research but supervise PhD students doing some of the field work, really grow capacity in the north. And that's our launching pad. And um, you know, from a university point of view, we've got Emerald, we've got obviously headquarters at Rocky, but we also have campuses in Mackay, Townsville, Cairns. We've got a study hub, so students can get some support in Broome of all places. Um, so we've got a quite a footprint out there that we can build from, but that's, we wanna get people in the regions doing the research where it matters and where it's gonna make a difference. So that's, I guess that's the answer to that, that first question that came through. Um, the second from an agronomist out in, in Emerald there, and the second question that he asked was around extension. Um, and that there's a need for extension to go with research. Hopefully we've sort of answered part of that by the way that we're trying to design projects of having producers participating um, and um, having producer groups participating in research, hosting trials and contributing feedback that there's a natural buy-in and, um, and hopefully that results in conversion into adoption of, of outcomes. Um, uh, the university, we do have a, a team that does extension um, Ag extension within our, our ag research team, and so we'll be bringing those those skills to the table and trying to work with producers to try and um, get some of this information out there. But I think the key to it all is is people getting involved and you know the knowledge sharing that um, uh, Bruce touched on. You know, obviously technology will be a big part of that and availability of com communications, but um, having um, people involved who who practice communicate uh, extension will be really important um, part of the, the project designs when when the ideas come to the table. How can we make sure that that's going to make a difference? How can we get the message out there to, to other growers and industry participants? So um, that's the first question, and hopefully I've answered that well enough. I don't know whether anyone else would like to add to that, Aaron, Brendan, or Bruce. No, not from my side. You did well, Michael. Okay, everyone's happy. Well, this next one's definitely for you, uh, Bruce. Um, questions come in from the audience. Can you comment on the rate of communication infrastructure going on? Do you see this improving in the future? And what impact do you see if we don't get the right infrastructure in? Um, well, I, I can't comment on, on, um, on particular. I don't, I don't know what uh, Telstra's up to, you know, all of those places, I know there's a lot of gaps. Um, I think, look, and I'm not right up on, on I know there are other sort of satellite type uh, communication things that, that go on. So quite frankly, I, I'm probably not um, qualified to really answer, but look, I just think um, for, for those of us who live in a part of the world where we just get used to being connected all the time, um, you know, having the ability to to um, connect uh, from a field in the you know Georgetown or a field in um, in uh, you know near Tennant Creek <laughs> um, is going to be very very valuable. So look, sorry, I I, I wish I did know uh, more detailed information. I just think it's it's going to be more and more critical, especially from things like um, you know you want to get a an agronomist. Um, virtually on your farm to look at what's going on, look at a weed, look at a, um, you know, observe something. I think that need for connection is is vital. So I, I probably haven't done justice to the question, but um, maybe there'll be some some solution that a, you know, I know a lot of farms have Wi-Fi across their whole their whole uh, uh, geography, and I've no doubt the technology will continue to to improve, to allow that to get better. Yeah, I guess the only thing I'd add, I'd agree with you 100% there, Bruce, that there's a, the infrastructure part is probably um, a question that, you know, governments and uh, are tackling at that level. Um, but at this level with our group, 
it's what can we do with the infrastructure? What innovations can we bring to that to to make um, you know farms more profitable and productive? I guess, and you know, we've seen it in um, certainly within our team here at Suki Uni and the Ag team, the way that they bring sensors and sensor data being cattle being captured from cattle stations in very remote areas and fed in using some novel technologies. But there's lots of possibilities out there, and we I don't. You know, it'd be in a perfect world, it'd be great if all that infrastructure was there, but we don't want to let that get in the way of trying to find some solutions in the meantime. Absolutely. Aaron or Brendan, did you want to comment on that at all from a producer's perspective? Um, yeah, I can, um, I guess just uh, one of the things that springs to mind with in relation to infrastructure in the north that we saw when we were up there a few years ago was... Um, the water storage capacity, um, you know, in particular in that um, Flinders River um, area, um, there was a lot of there was a lot of people had bought entitlements um, out of various different river systems up there, but there were very few people at the time, and a lot of that may have changed because we haven't been up there for a bit. But um, um, yeah, there were a lot of people had bought water and had enormous thoughts and um, uh, wanting to do something the water, but uh, they're sort of the chicken or the egg scenario. They didn't know which bit to do first, whether to build a dam to store water or um, develop irrigation and then the dam or which was, which I think uh, a large part of this, you know, there's a research project in that. And, and look, some of the coffee guys are, are working up there already with the Northern CRC and, you know, in that space. So, there's yeah there's there's collaboration I guess that we can tap into there as as Bruce said you know there's mis mistakes being made already and there's successes and we need to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes twice but we need to to look at the people that are doing well or, or doing something that's working and and can we build on that but one of the things one of the big pluses I think you know from a grain well even cotton point of view um, is the freight advantages albeit a long way away from anywhere, particularly um, being able to drag triple road trains around up there, um, particularly if they were going east to, to say the port of Townsville um, in, in an export capacity for, for you know, whatever grain or uh, it might be or whatever produce it might be, um, being able to shift that much grain uh, directly to port in, in one hit is certainly something that we struggle with further south here, which increases freight rates. Um, so yeah, um, I know just talking to some of the guys that we are involved with now in the Burdekin and there's, there's a lot going on up there with these guys growing, um, corn and soybeans in a mostly cane rotation. And, um, I think if you're in the silo manufacturing business, I think they're the people to talk to at the moment because they're all looking at developing their own grain handling facilities, which they haven't got yet. And, you know, oddly enough, a lot of that grain that's being produced in that region is comes all the way down here to Toowoomba in the south. So, for processing, so um, yeah, there's a myriad, myriad of different um, uh, things to look at, and I think that's what's so exciting about this project is everyone can see the potential. Um, just got to start uh, and um, get some good good stories happening up there for people to to look at the examples of. And probably one of the constraints, I guess, um, and this is right across the industry and, and, and could get well down in the south, is the um, the, um, the arrival of the fall armyworm. That's that's something that's, you know, very topical in the north um, and it's not going to go any go away anytime soon. So, um, but then again, there's there's a research opportunity in there to, to learn how to manage, work with it and manage it and control it. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Brendan. Um, yeah, some, some good detail there. And I think you're, you're spot on. There's a, that infrastructure balance, you know, we've got a, Northern cropping's got to reach, a, a, I guess, a critical mass in a sense to get to that point where that infrastructure investment is going to follow. And it's a, it is a bit of a chicken and egg, but if we can do our bit to help with that, reach that critical mass, um, I think that's a, a good contribution to achieving that goals. Um, a couple of questions have come in, um, and 
the one that topic we've just been speaking to is a, is a sort of a good segue to this question. Um, is there anything special about this exact moment in history that makes investment and development in Northern Australia more attractive than in the past? Aaron, Bruce, either of you want to have a fair first crack at that? I suppose, um, oh, look, uh, that's a great question. I think um, the things that, the things that um, look, and, you know, I'm not an economist or whatever, but I do, I do think the, um, you know, there, there's enormous challenges, as I said, and obviously, um, you know, the, the advancement of things like um, cottonseed development, etc., have really made cotton a, a, a very good uh, option for northern growers now. Um, so that, that sort of advancement is a new thing that, that or relatively new, um, that's helped. I think, again, what I, uh, something I said earlier, <laughs> um, you know, the, the drought always um, makes people uh, think about being a bit more diversified in their location strategy um, and that, those sorts of things. But I think there is a lot of, um, you know, and, I'm, and I am particularly talking about a Northern, Northern Territory at the moment, but there is a lot of um, excitement with new projects, which may, you know, may not have been available earlier um, in North northwestern Queensland. I think there's a lot of opportunity um, given the, from what my, my limited experience, the local communities in the, in the northwestern part of Queensland are very welcoming <laughs> of farming uh, enterprises. The Northern Territory, given uh, Darwin has um, uh, got a lar relatively large population of people who have no connection to agriculture uh, quite ill-informed about um, crop developments and potentially, you know, have opinions that are not accurate. So, whereas North Queensland, the, the smaller communities out there are, um, are all gung-ho for new developments. So, that's a couple of my comments anyway. Okay. Aaron, what's the vibe you're getting from your members? Of that, sorry, Michael? What's the vibe you're getting from your members about the opportunities in the north at the moment? Well, um, I think the opportunities in the north from the vibe, it's um, very positive, Michael. It's for everyone out there, it's got to grow. And, you know, there's the land, there's the water, and um, we need to support everyone as a whole to make it go. But I think it's a very positive vibe. Is there anything different now than, say, five years ago or 20 years ago that you're picking up on? Well, I think back to what Bruce said, there's been a lot of research done on, on grain varieties and cotton and, you know, your pulses. So um, I reckon, yeah, it's pretty positive moving that way. And it's just a matter of support. And I suppose I did see a question there about other grower groups and getting grower groups started and connected is a way to um, work together. Um. That actually brings me to the next question from Kim McIntyre, who's asked, do we have a system in place to support or help develop grower groups, e.g. a facilitator? And Gillian Mappin's added to that, are there plans for supporting a peer-to-peer -peer learning platform? So um, I guess, that, yeah, the two points there that I'd, I'd initially make would be um, definitely want to engage with other grower groups in, in localised regions and if we can play a role in supporting the establishment of that through a project I think that would be um, a really useful contribution to industry generally um, but as I said at the, at, in, in talking about our structure at the be very beginning when we go you know this committee you know hopefully taps into ideas and needs from growers and industry, we come together, work out how can we get a project uh, funded through some of the funding agencies that it's at that point that will, you know, those, those design questions really come to the fore. So are there grower groups that we need to work with or other, um, um, you know, research agencies or uh, whatever that, you know, we need to bring into that project design? 
Um, and, you know, do we need to um, establish a peer-to-peer -peer learning model in order to deliver a research objective? So we definitely think about extension and grower groups in those conversations. And we uh, certainly every meeting we've had to date, we've talked about growers in this region or that region. How, you know, how can we listen and get, in, get them involved? Um, so that would be my take on it. That we, yeah, there's a definite process there and it's something that we want to do. But, and we're very open to, to hearing from grower groups and, and trying to engage with them and support them if we can. Um, uh, guys, did you want to add anything to that one? That was my take on that question. You might have a different opinion, but this is what the process of collaboration is about. If there's different views, happy to hear them. Well, just back to the grower groups there, Michael, we do need, you know, you need to hear from groups in the north to collaborate, I suppose, with, with Central Islands or the uni to head north. So we need to know the issues and work as a group, you know, like to keep ag growing. So, and I think Brendan touched on it. Um, it's every commodity, you know, it's grains, it's pulses, it's cotton. So, and citrus is on the go as well. So, you know, it's all, all happening. Um, next question that's come in, and, and we might have actually answered this already, but we'll uh, go through it again uh, from Tony Matchett about how are the research projects going to be funded? So, yeah, from concept, from, from growers, let's determine a, uh, an, a research question that needs to be answered. Um, we then uh, see what, what funding, it, it, is available through the research agencies such as the GRDC, Cotton RDC or the CRC for Northern Australia. Um, design a, a, a research project application to take to those funding organisations and you know that might mean, like I said, we, this group isn't going to be able to do it all by itself. So we want to, you know, we'll be reaching out to groups to say, well, would you be able to provide research services in this region or would that agency be the best person to partner with in that region to try and make some of the, you know, deliver on this, this objective. But yeah, we'll come together as a collaboration, go and get the, and then seek funding from the um, agencies to try and make that uh, a real living thing. Um, only other point I'd, I'd make on that one is that this is starting to happen already. So we've, we've already reached out to the CRC for Northern Australia. Um, we've had some very productive conversations with GRDC and Cotton RDC, uh, nothing happening yet, but the, there's some interest there. We're, we're building those bridges to try and make that happen. Um, and CRC for Northern, developing Northern Australia has sponsored two PhD students to conduct research into I guess climatic factors that are going to affect grain quality and production uh, in the north um, hasn't been as well studied as down south and so they're already coming to the party to say we'll put some money on the table to get some research happening and um, a big thank you to you know Aaron and Brendan and their associations have said yeah when the time comes for those PhD students to do field work we're happy to help try and um, facilitate getting field sites with our grower members, you know, to, to test some of those those research ideas. So it is coming to the coming to reality already, and um, even though we're only a few weeks old, so it's um, we're off to a good start, and hopefully um, we'll we'll get some more projects in the future. Um, Aaron, Brennan, Bruce, did you want to add anything to those those questions about funding or um, grower groups that we just touched on? Uh, no, not from me. No, nothing from me, uh, Michael. Yeah, nothing here as well, either, Michael. Okay. Excellent. Um, well, we've still got a couple of minutes left. If anyone else has a, a further question or a comment, um, I think we've gone through everything that's come in via the, the chat box. Um, Anyone wanting to add any last last call for questions and comments? Well, what I might do just to um, I might just make a, a closing comment, and if a question comes in in the meantime, we'll deal with it. But um, from the CQ University's point of view, and on behalf of all the 
participants in the in this collaboration that we've got going. Um, firstly, thank you to our, our partners and also a big thank you to everyone who's turned up today to learn a little bit more about what we're trying to achieve. Um, and um, hopefully we've answered your questions and we look forward to working with you in the future because this really is about listening to growers, understanding needs, working with growers to try and make a difference. And if you've got any ideas, um, come to um, whoever your, your, your closest point of contact is, whether that's Bruce or Aaron or Brendan or Ag, your Ag Force rep or the Central Highlands Development Corporation. Um, let us know what you're thinking and, and certainly we want to have those, those conversations, see what we can do to, to, to get a bit of activity, uh, kickstart some activity in the north and try and make a difference to, to agriculture in the north. So um, we, like I said at the start, this has been recorded. We'll save this and we'll share that through um, uh, via email to everyone who registered today. There's a few people who couldn't make it. Um, but we've had a good turn up with over 30 at times in the webinar and we had about 50, more than 50 people register. So there's a lot of interest out there in, in trying to uh, know more about what we're doing. So we'll share that video and um, I think um, through our own networks, we'll um, pass that video on to, for, for sharing. If, if you want to pass through your email distribution list, you know, um, please feel free to share that, spread the word. And hopefully by working together, we can all make a bit of a difference. So um, thank you very much to, to everyone for coming along. Any last comments from Bruce, Brendan or Aaron before we clock off? Uh, thanks everyone for your interest. It's good to see you all. Yeah, just to add to that as well. Yeah, thanks for everyone for your interest and um, yeah, let's con continue to go on the journey. Yeah, thanks Michael. Um, yeah, no, nothing more for me, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, letting us be involved and um, yeah, look forward to going forward. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, everyone. We'll call it time there and um, some, some lovely comments coming in. So really appreciate your support. So thanks everybody. And we'll, we'll talk again soon. Bye now. Thank you.